today we're going over IBS, also known as irritable bowel syndrome. The three things that we're going to cover today is what is IBS? Number two, what are the common symptoms of IBS? And make sure you stick around to the end because we're going to go over the top three things that you can do today in order to take that stress off of your gut. You know, this is a very, very important topic that we're talking about today. This is a condition um, that has been growing steadily throughout the last few years, especially with all the emotional stress, with a freaking pandemic and all the other madness going around. And it's considered an important public health problem because there's no true understanding of what's causing it because they can't find out a true solution to fix it. But there is a 100% correlation. You ask any physician that deals with IBS, there is a emotional stress component to this um, syndrome, so to speak. So what we got to understand is how the brain and gut do connect, um, you know, and what we eat affects our emotional state as well and how our immune system is so intertwined and so complex that we can't even understand. But we're going to go over these later on these certain little tools that you can address um, to fix this condition. Well, and, and, and I think the biggest thing here is with IBS is, is that, you know, you talked about it's a psychosomatic. So the way that the your intestines work with your brain, that's the, that's the biggest takeaway with IBS. And I think up until now, science has done really well with targeting specific things that are going on. But when it comes to the way that our brain is functioning with the rest of our body, I think we're still lagging behind a little bit. But we're also getting better at that. You know, and there has to be. A correlation to what's going on in the world right now not i mean if you really look at a lot of you know mortality rates and health problems that we have sugar and diabetes is is usually right up there at number one causing a lot of these issues so i think the reason we're seeing a lot more of this syndrome is because diets are not healthy mm -hmm. that is a direct correlation how many times have you ate something that's not very good for you and then 20 minutes later you kind of feel a little down there is a direct correlation. They call it the brain gut axis. And we could go into details, but it's so complex. It's, it's almost confusing. But what we have to understand is our anxious anxiety state that we're the majority of the population are in is directly affected to the motility or how your food is digested in your guts. If you're not in that rest and digest state and you're not calm, that food can't be processed. It can't be digested. And then that's why symptoms of constipation or diarrhea are the two most common things you see with IBS, along with chronic abdominal pain. So we got to clean out those guts, but the gut brain connection, you can't just fix one. You know, that's why there's an emotional component. A psychologist will tell you this as well. The body can't tell the difference. So balancing out the emotional stress and cleaning up the diet are the two most effective ways to naturally heal this syndrome. Yeah. And I, and I think that's where we're getting with uh, today's times that's different than before. You know, I, I believe that you, know, you go to a doctor and you say, well, I have diarrhea or I have constipation. Mm -hmm. They're looking straight at the guts and going, okay, well, how can we make that better? But really, you got to look at both parts now. You got to look at that mental frame, because if you don't fix, like you just said, both of them, you, you're leaving out part of the equation and, and you're just not going to solve it the way that you want to. And then what all you're also seeing is that same age range, a very common age range for gallbladder removals. So, you know, the first thing is they come in with chronic abdominal pain. They're going to check the gallbladder. As soon as they rule out that connection with the liver and make sure everything's good there, they're going to diagnose you with IBS. And the true, I, I think the physicians are starting to understand now that this is a more of an emotional stress component that medicine and prescriptions aren't going to fix this problem. Yeah. The three things that you can do mm. that can help you out. So you go with the first one, uh, elaborate a little bit about more about what you did with working out and stuff like that. I think the most important thing to do is to get up an hour early and move. It doesn't have to be lifting weights. That's what's always helped me. I love lifting weights. Um, but getting up, going for a run, doing some yoga. Yoga is fantastic because it opens up all those energy chakras and you're stretching out a lot of muscles that aren't being stretched. Um, but just movement. And then just, or maybe some mindfulness, you know, read your Bible for a little bit, do some, uh, you know, meditations, stuff like that to kind of clear your head. But I think movement's the best medicine to start the day. Yeah, because movement not only helps your physical, you know, your body, but also your brain as well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's proven that it helps both things. So, so that's number one. Number two, make sure you're eating the best you can. 
and especially when it comes to um, high stressful times mm -hmm. in your life. So, so like for me, uh, I was getting married. That's a high stress time. And I was also starting a business here with Dr. Egan at the same time, all in three months, mm -hmm. high stress time. So especially at that time, I need to watch what I'm doing. I need to watch what I'm eating, what I'm consuming. Am I drinking too much? All those different things go into how you feel at the end of the day. So number one, work out, get moving. Number two, eat what you should when you should. And, and you should always try to eat the best you can all the time. But we know, hey, we're we going to eat some pizza too. And that's why I wanted to outline, when you know you're having stressful times, just like I just went to my brother's wedding and I was really nervous to stand up there and, and do all those different things, I tried to eat a little bit better. I tried to do a little bit better in preparation to that mm -hmm. point because I knew that that would help calm down my nerves. No doubt. Yeah, and limiting the sugar because yeah. sugar is like throwing kerosene on the fire to anything that's already inflamed. And another thing with IBS is there's an area in your intestines that's chronically inflamed. So adding more foods that cause inflammation are going to make it worse. And then that connection to the area of your brain that's kind of part of your limbic system, your emotional component. So there is going to be a, a correlation to that. So not only are you saving yourself trips to the bathroom in front of everybody at the wedding, <laughs> but you're emotionally right, the ball game. staying in check. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the ball game coming off second base. Yep. Dude, everybody's like. They're still talking about what's, that. What's old, what's old Brad doing out there? And number three, go see a therapist. Go see somebody. Confide in somebody. You know, and, and a therapist is the best thing to go do. But also talking to loved ones as well. Some loved ones are friends who don't judge too much. Let's say let's say it like that. If there's somebody that's that's someone good to have a good release with, those things will help. But ultimately, if you're having, you know, chronic IBS, you're going to need to seek out some professional help. That way you can get that brain better as well. Because if you exercise, that's going to help out with the brain. If you eat better, that's going to help out with the guts. But if you don't address the mental component, you're not going to get to where you need with it. And along with that mental component, it's it's not only, you know, seeking out some some professional help, but getting out in nature. That's something that yeah. I've found is is you know, last weekend, I mean, it's December here in the Midwest, but stopped by Bass Pro Shops. I got that new aquarium. Yeah. I, going off to that, so looking at creatures and, and how beautifully made they are, and you look at certain fish and their colors, and you realize, or you look out in nature at amazing things, and you realize how insignificant we really are. Yeah. I hate being that way, but we got to take our, mm, our, our, our own personal crap out of it and really just take a step back and appreciate certain things because what that does emotionally is it makes us realize that those certain problems aren't as big because we're making them bigger than they need to be. But really just appreciating other things, they're just uh, nature is the best medicine. Man. So, so you're saying that those fish look better in person than they do all on your phone? What are you uh, looking at? Well, I mean, once I took pictures with them, they, they turned out all right. Well, okay, so no, what, no, what I was saying was it's better to get out and go do something and see it firsthand than just watch things on your phone all the time. Yeah, even looking at a fish tank, you know, these fish are out of the ocean; they were endangered or whatever that is, and and so I kind of go in there feeling bad for them, but then you can really appreciate them. Look how close and beautifully made they are. Look at those colors, dude. That was freaking created, man, and yeah. so as a human being you're just like wow we were really small yeah we're really small that's mindful this buddy yeah and that's that's a biggest part of of this whole thing so doing activities like that stimulate the brain to kind of ease up that emotional stress and nature's nature's everything i like